back forth. They were all the institutions were differing uh, to the authorities of uh, you know government saying that okay they let the government do it and then you know we don't want to interfere in what is essentially a government's uh, role and more and more uh, things became a uh, free run uh, for the government and the other institutions such as media civil society etc from at that point of time were in a slight bit of a shock and even judiciary at to a large extent had said that whatever is executive's domain should be left at it and we should not be trying to deal uh, interfere or even try to ask questions there whatever government submitted it is submitted it is taken on record as 100% truth uh it was in that context that i uh, i resigned because that uh, the 370 abrogation and the way it was done in kashmir and till today it is continuing uh, in some form or the other is that they said they can shut down a state uh and through executive orders not even any uh, constitutional mechanism just executive orders uh, and they can shut down an entire state and nobody would raise a question uh that that uh, we need to think a little bit over it because we, we always feel that kashmir is a troubled state is a you know there are geopolitical considerations there so many other things are there at play of course but ultimately we ourselves claim it to be an indian state we we say that you know kashmiris are our own uh, fellow citizens so if we say that then to go ahead and impose the kind of restrictions through executive dictates was highly unconstitutional and also uh, immoral and saying uh, and it continued for a long period and when a government does like that it is expected that the rest of the people would you know the pe- those who consider as them as fellow citizens is expected to come out and say this is not done you can't simply jail uh, elected members of parliament minis ex ministers chief ministers youth uh, cut cut down on entire communication cut down on entire transportation everything with such impunity and they said because this is for a larger good the larger good narrative it is for your own good that we are doing all this so just listen to what the government is saying that is uh, that was always resulted in this authoritarianism this narrative wherein the individual's liberty is to be sacrificed and everybody if a few people have committed a crime then the entire population two aspects of it that entire population is uh, punished for it few people did something okay that becomes a reason to punish an entire population and then second thing for a larger good people will have to suffer people will have to sacrifice and that is the way in which almost all the regimes have come up also so that, at that point of time i was more worried because we as a nation are still young as a democracy and unless uh, people have a stern belief in democratic values and we are ready to fight for it it's very really easy to lose uh, ourselves you know that we we take a lot of things as granted even the formal democracy we take it as granted we feel that that is going to be ever unless we fight for it i felt it is going to be a little tough and that was one of the key reasons of resignation the way we did it in kashmir and the silence around it you know the both the things are equally uh, important to me and i got out and i started going across the country and uh, speaking on why what we did in kashmir is wrong like 370 is not going to stop terrorism 370 you know removing 370 is just an irritation in a constitution it's nothing more than that and uh, for for us and for uh, the kashmiris it was an emotional bond that was granted to at the time of you know when uh, they became part of the union and so we wa- were so obsessed with a small irritation that we completely were ready to uh, you know overlook the emotional uh, connect or emotional bond that was there and then that that was what we saw there and neither the terrorism is going to be affected nor the kashmir development is going to be affected and in fact the integration is going to be even more difficult because it will result in more alienation and more radicalization of the people so whatever was the intention that the government had said or told the public all of that is uh, you know i was trying to have this conversation uh, to the uh, to everybody and there is no point going to kashmir and talking to it because it is rest of us who think that whatever is happening in kashmir is correct and that is the reason uh, you know we many of us feel also that when an army jawan you know is losing because one of our own is fighting a battle and is uh, you know sacrificing his life and you feel anger that is you know that anger is very much justified but at the same time you have to also see what are the 
decisions what are the larger government level decisions that has led to this that also has to be questioned and we cannot shy away from those questions saying that say asking such questions would be anti national asking such questions would be pro pakistani or you know stuff uh, th those kind of things as a democracy we should be mature enough we should be mature enough to take all these questions and go forward and that is how we have been uh, i mean it's not the case that this is the only government which is trying to maximize power uh, all the governments have all the governments have this tendency every single government which comes with a, a bit of a majority has this tendency and the bureaucracy also likes it because bureaucracy also likes to abrogate power as much as possible so be it the police be it and it becomes then a fight of who gets you know is the police getting maximum power or the administration getting the maximum power this unbridled power is a is a dream for everybody be it the politicians in power or the permanent bureaucracy because politicians might change the power still continues with the administration so but this was always kept in check by the grassroots movement democratic movements through protests through media through judiciary through rti you know all these things are acting as a check uh, on the opposition one of the key aspects of opposition uh, thing and all these things are acting as a check which uh, somehow we seem to have uh, we, we i felt that we are slowly eroding on those capacities those institutional capacities and hence there is a need to raise this uh, raise this issue raise, get out and express your opinion that is important and that is how i started talking to various uh, you know people inside i went to bihar i went i've been to around 20 states during this period 20 states almost 70 districts uh, have been covered 65 70 districts have covered having these conversations and why it is important to question the power you know the whatever may be the good intentions of the people who are in power in a democracy it is fundamental that they are accountable to the people you know i it's it is not a family and logi wherein your father is coming and you know everybody should just obey what the father is saying because father is doing whatever he is doing is for the good of the family that's not the case at times when that family and logi itself the father could be doing so many ruinous things and you have seen so many families going uh, you know uh, because the father is not checked on what are the things that he is doing but democracy is not like uh, a family a joint family and the prime minister or the chief minister whoever be it is not a uh, head of the uh, joint family we are not children we are adults we are adults and we are we know what is it that is at stake for us and we have we have given them the power uh, their power derives from what we have given uh, those uh, to the people who are in power and that's why it becomes important they are reminded of that and they are asked to be accountable they are asked questions and they are made to answer those questions that is why this becomes key part and one of the way through which we used to ask questions was media the other was through judiciary the other was through rti the other was through popular movements none of it uh, for a period of time we uh, you know we saw the constant erosion in all of that we considered all that uh, we started considering many of us also started believing all these things as a hindrance in good governance or hindrance in making india a uh, you know very powerful country or uh, you know where it should be but when we you know one of the key aspects of india as a powerful country was its institutions democratic institutions and when we started considering those very institutions and those very questions as hindrances that is when actually we started going back uh, in fact we have traveled backward not forward during these years we have gone back and that is uh, something we we'll have to deal with it because this is not going to be end of the and you know not this dispensation or another dispensation or even 10 15 years india is much bigger and much stronger than one government or particular uh, dispensation or anything we will we'll have years to come uh, look forward to and uh, fight for considering that that is the background and then the citizenship amendment act and an rc uh, thing came in because i was in chennai in around september and i was giving a, a talk on kashmir and then one girl very young girl she stood up and she was so angry i was talking about freedom of expression like i was telling here that freedom of expression is very fundamental to democracy etc she stood up and she cut me in between and she said what kind of freedom of expression are you talking about i might not be even a citizen i am a 23 year old girl Uh, till yesterday I, i was an indian citizen tomorrow i might not be and you are talking about freedom of expression what uh, you know what is it that we have to expect from this indian state so uh, that uh, shook me very much this is september 2019 uh, just a month 
uh, after my resignation and i felt uh, i started studying about little more on the ca etc she is from eastern part of the country she is a hindu and uh, because there at that point of time there were all sort of tension was going on and then i came back to mumbai and mumbai i was having this conversation a uh, couple of muslim friends were there i told this story to them and they started cry in fact i still remember very vividly that tear drops on my uh, friend's beard that, that that you know it was coming like a pearl uh, and i asked him what happened then he said you know look at my whatsapp group these are the uh, you know uh, forwards that we are getting and what are the document that we should make we are unable to find a document of 1940 where my grandfather was a indian national army along with subhash chandra bos he had fought but they are unable to find that document and he his point was that if you are able to get that document then uh, he will not have to prove anything more as a uh, indian you know he would be a patriotic indian before independence fighting for india's freedom so and i was quite uh, amazed because i did not have, i did not have any documents of even 20 years before and uh, i was not afraid but there is a girl who is from west bengal or assam she is afraid because of her location and there is somebody who is from mumbai who is afraid because of his religion and i am not because i am neither from the region or not from the religion uh, but in, in my immediate reply was like uh, you know those uh, agar if you get this document also please please burn it Uh, because not every muslim will be able to show this document uh, you know 1940s that grandfather is a indian national army uh, soldier or something and because you showing it would mean that many others would have to show that also so that was the period at that uh, point of time uh, i got involved then from september onwards i started reading quite a lot on this and started giving speech as to why uh, the ca and rc and pr is is a danger at uh, lurking at us and there is a need to protest and there is a need to uh you know democratically say to the governments that we don't agree and to be very honest the movement was highly successful because it inspired uh, or it kindled the energy among a lot of youth the youth which would otherwise would have felt that you know this is democracy just obeying government is democracy uh, that youth now know uh, that you know it is questioning the government the questioning people who are in power that is what is democracy all about it is the continuous and constant dialogue uh you know and making the people who are in power answerable that is democracy so that uh, we already succeeded in a large uh, extent and i also tell this that a uh, community as a muslim who are very reluctant to come forward on non religious issues only on religious issues as a community muslims used to come out for you know to express its views but on non religious issues never used to come out and that is something which is also seen probably for the first time that on a very constitutional legal ethical issue also it has come out and said no this is something we don't agree with and we have every right as as any other citizen in this country to come out and fight for our rights just like uh, farmers uh, fight for farmers rights just like tribals fight for tribal rights you know labor fights for labor rights if, if something is targeting muslims then muslims of course have a right just as any other citizen in this country to come out and fight for what you know they feel is correct and that democratic right is well within in the constitution and it is a constitutional means it is not anything fighting a war against government or anything protest is a fundamental right and this then later turned up into a lot of states uh, accepting this democratic demand and at least 9 or 10 states passing resolutions against citizenship government act and also against an rc and also in one form or the other against npr which this form or the other form and that is how democracies are supposed to be where there is a government has made a decision i ideally it should have consulted before taking the decision but it took a decision however be it but there was a backlash and lot of people lot of governments in power were forced to respond to that people's movement and that that view, uh, that thing was quite successful uh, in that way and it was in the peak or probably around that when uh, this uh, covid uh, thing happened but covid uh, of course using the covid a lot of uh, fias and uh, uh, uapa and other things have been filed in fact two fias have been filed against me uh, one in rajkot and one in daman uh, there are activists in delhi from jamia who have been uh, targeted under uapa uh, there are across the uh, you know wherever they are finding in up there are a lot of arrests that are happening Uh, many places uh, it is happening but more than that more than those individual arrests or individual uh, fias what uh, covid the government has shown is that government actually uh, 
the tendency to be go go into that authoritarian side is very visible because just look at the way uh, the migrant worker crisis was dealt with no other place uh, it could have been possible that a large section of people large population wants to go back to their home it's a very simple uh, thing they are living in like i don't know how many of you have seen uh, go to a construction site migration happens this migrant worker thing happens for let's say construction brick uh, brick kiln or textile or domestic uh, labor etc for so many of uh, these things this temporary migration i'm talking about not permanent migration so if you go there and see the kind of situations in which if it's a construction site you would find a tin shed lines of tin sheds in which they are staying and shared toilet spaces and that is the space where we where we said that you have to go back and stay because you could be a threat you know you could actually take this and spread elsewhere and if you go back and stay there that is what rest of the country wants because we we saw the entire covid from a very upper middle class or middle class upper middle class rich kind of a lens and it was genuine i think i don't think it was it it was a deliberate thing it was a genuine thing because the way we are seeing all of those rhetorics uh, of uh, tali bajana from balcony diya jalana from balcony all of those were because of the lens that was through which uh, through which the country was being seen because uh, when you see the country as people in apartments flats etc and those who can stay inside and not worry and stay without daily income for a month two month three month from their savings and just wear whatever is required and then you know take part in this gestures and the symbolic gestures because that is the lens you have chosen to wear and that is the feedback uh, your team has given to you that this is what is more important because that those are reflective of their own life they are, those are not reflective of the larger reality of the country those are reflective of their own, you know your person's own life and that continued i remember writing from march last week april 1st in fact i wrote a long thread on why it is not just humanitarian but also rational 100% rational that we should let the people go back uh, uh, home and this is criminal in fact I gave an interview uh, the times of india also everywhere that it is it is unacceptable that we are not letting the migrants go back to their home for two reasons one is of course they have every right just like you have a right to be in your home attending this i have my right to be here they also have every right to be back with their family with the support and affection and compassion of their community and you know their they where they belong to when even when you are especially when you are facing such a huge uh, pandemic but forget about the humanitarian part or the fundamental rights part you look at it from a very highly rational point of view you effectively said that all the migrants should stay back in the red zone districts effectively the be it mumbai be it surat be it ahmedabad be it kerala be it delhi the all of these places were actually places with high in you know, number of cases and then you said you stay back there and what is the conditions under which they are staying they are staying in a highly congested highly concentrated area shared toilet spaces and this is the place where they are forced to stay against their will and the for a month or so after i think around for 40 days they continued like that in staying in in hotspot districts in highly congested spaces where social distancing or physical distancing none of those things are possible and after that they have been just asked to go back without any testing at least you could do the testing and send them home because when they go back also they are going to face discrimination when they go back to their homes and the, you know if they have a cough also then the people around would naturally see with suspicion and it is it is quite not, you know correct also to see that somebody is coming from let's say amdavad and he is having a cough and people would see have you tested and if the person says i have not tested then immediately he'll he'll face another round of uh, discrimination whatever he faced here is from strangers but when he goes back home he is going to i hope he does not but i you know my uh, experience says that they are going to face another round of discrimination our own citizens it's our own people you know uh, just just uh, like you and i don't i don't know how we can uh, treat our own citizens like this and you have seen the number of deaths uh, which have happened on the road on the rail on, on all sort of people are fighting in trains uh, over roti you know uh, and these are the people who who used to work and who used to run our economy in a very silent way no no you know people weren't even bothered because the idea was 
we will tell what to do don't give any feedback just listen okay and this became uh, the key aspect of the entire covid response from 22nd janta curfew to 24th when they said that in 4 hours time i'm going to lock everything up and you know without announcing any single measure it just said that 4 hours i'm going to shut down the entire country entire country is going to be in the lockdown and that happened and then the government did not even come out and say what is that they are you know going to do during this period what are the goals uh, during this period is it that okay on for 21 days the government is going to ensure that every district is going to have 20% more additional beds or at least 50 or 100 or 200 ventilators according to the district size or that my manpower is going to be enhanced by 1.5 times or that i am going to create a volunteer force of you know 1000 people in every district who can deal with it at least as a first responder or i am going to create an infrastructure for a self monitoring capacity or an assisted self monitoring capacity or i am going to create a volunteer force for contact tracing or i am going to ensure that my testing reaches to 10 lakh per day because we will need more than that uh, you know the testing capacity none of it government did not said that okay uh, we are going to uh, we are asking you to stay back uh, in your homes we are asking you to suffer the poor especially because uh, for them every day work is how they earn the food and you could see it once you serve in any of the districts i've been a uh, couple of districts as dms and once you travel around once you meet people once you know the, their life you know that how the daily bread is earned and once you know it, it is it is impossible for you to not consider while making a decision but that is what has happened completely ignored that uh, the entire population uh, i would say 30% of the population or 40% of the population has been completely ignored while making the decision and when the government asked the entire population to make this sacrifice government should have at least said this is my target okay we have taken 30 days from your life but after 30 days this is where we supplant to be and after 30 days or 21 days the government comes out and says okay we had to make 500 ventilators available in all the bigger districts we are at 250 then you could understand okay i have stayed back at 21 days i have obeyed everything what the government has done ask me to do but at least the government has reached 50% of what it has said then you can you can be okay you, you can justify this but whereas none of that is uh, said the government today can come out and said okay we made 500 ventilators but nobody knows what was the target how do we know this 21 days was worth 500 uh, uh, ventilators or not so this complete lack of transparency during this uh, the entire period second is it's a top driven we will say what to do every single decision has to come from the government of india and from the mha or from the concerned thing and we will tell everybody just listen in the fact is government is as blind as all of us are about the disease and it's not just their fault it's simply not their fault this false sense of being in control is more dangerous at least you know it, it should one should be humble enough to come out and say we don't know we don't know the extent of the disease we, because we have not been able to do even antibody testing till date we we boast of that entire thing we don't know what you know is going to be the spread we don't how is it going to be and but we are trying to do this these are the measures we are going to take and this is where we are at least that much of transparency should have come out that we did not ask also and government did not provide also and because they know that uh, his uh, the popularity uh, is on the gestures and uh, through that it can be controlled but unfortunately the virus uh, is not so influenced by the popularity of the leader uh, the virus has its own life and it is going as per you know unless we take steps which are important to stop it and another thing we did not consider while taking the decision was that every day of lockdown is actually one day we are reducing the resilience capacity of the society government thinks in a particular way government says one day more we can get okay we can add maybe one more bed or maybe we can add one more ventilator or maybe we can get prepared for another round of testing but what the government is blind to or maybe not consider was that one day of not having his income means an entire population affected not getting his food not getting his food means his physiological health his nutritional his psychological his economic his social every single thing is affected and you put this 30 days now you have much more vulnerable population 
you have a much more vulnerable population who can easily succumb to this disease. You have neither protected from the disease, you have not just stopped the disease, nor have you, you know, ensured that these people don't lose their capacity, their innate capacity, without any government, because the majority of the poor population in this country survives despite the government, not because of the government. Despite the government, people have found their ways to survive. Their resilience capacity is there. And that is also eroded because of this overly forceful uh, kind of a gesture which was done. And the way it gets implemented is another thing because uh, many a times we get ang uh, you know we get angry at the police uh, on the field or the administration in the uh, on the field uh, but uh, maybe maybe that's my bias also because uh, i have been at, on that side uh, but factoring in for that bias i would say there is a amount of frustration among them also you imagine they are they are facing this they can get the disease there is no clarity. It's just like you and me. Uh, they have no clarity and they have no resource. There are two people who are supposed to deal with maybe a 500, 500 or 1,000 or 500,000 people uh, population. And the way the administration works is very simple. Make an example out of them. Okay, whoever is doing it, beat the shit out of them so that nobody else you know, would do it, would dare to do it. Not that, okay, arrest him and bring him to the police station because that would mean further procedure. So much of procedure needs to be done and there is no resource to do it because you have to go to the next place. So every place you go and make an example because, because the expectation from them is not commensurate with the resources or their capacity. It is much, much beyond what they can ever do. And this becomes comes out as frustration. It comes out as personal vendetta. It comes out as making an example. All these things that we are seeing and this gets added up. The way uh, you know people were vilified, the the way people and imagine the media also. There was one media, uh, you know, one of the mainstream media making a comment that uh, people have money to line up after the you know outside of liquor shop, but can't they buy the ticket for their train tickets? Means people who are in the liquor shop and people who are uh, you know migrants who are coming from. Um, various places. He is saying these are same people and hence why can't they purchase tickets and instead of just making a mockery out of their misery. Initially they thought the government was only like this towards maybe minorities or something. No, it's not that. What What is revealing is that anybody who even you know becomes a dag, you know, uh, a stain on their whatever is imagined wonderful uh, dress that they are wearing or they, you know, what they're dreaming it to be, or what the belief, make-believe world they are in, even if it comes as a small stain, they just want to remove it. They don't want to understand that why is it that, you know, he's not a, you know, this, this are not citizens, those are not stains. But the way it is responding, it's much beyond that. Anybody, everybody is trying to attack somebody's reputation or somebody's government, and hence anybody who questions should be immediately silenced. Immediately silenced. I remember... I asked a question and immediately somebody, some some highly influential person from the right wing called me a liberal corona vulture. Then I asked him that why, why do you call? I just asked a question to the prime minister. Uh, of course, I have a right to be upset. Uh, I asked a question, why do you call me a vulture for that? Of course, he is a gentleman. He said later deleted it and he said, you know, uh, okay, uh, he did not mention about that part. But then the questions were about how we are dealing with it and whether it was good or not, correct or not. But it is anybody questions immediately silence him and the way to silence initially was just by trolling calling whatever names anti-national pakistani etc etc making personal character assassination attack just look at the way safura uh, has been uh, you know uh, i don't think uh, the jail I, I don't know i can't speak for her but i i honestly don't think uh, jail would have been more painful because the way she has been targeted and harassed throughout the kind of character assassination, that is something we should we should protect every single person. Because once we know the government is going to come after, it could be me, it could be anybody, it could be her, it could be anybody. More than the term itself, it is the kind of character assassination that is going to happen. Because the government wants to completely eliminate the reputation of the person who ha has even the slightest guts to stand up against the power. And the reputation has to go. It has to completely be destroyed. And this is a, a typical playbook. So nobody is, there is nobody who can question because anybody who questions is already tarnished. And this thing we have to be really careful about and we should, we should be 
express expressing our solidarity we should be sharing our solidarity with everybody and saying that we are together in this and not only in the previous fight not only of the ca and rc part but even after that we are together and the good thing about this is that at least during this period because of that movement a lot of us are connected a lot of us are connected a lot of us know that okay there is there is a large section of people in this country who are ready to question and who is ready to say, sacrifice a lot of things to ensure that this question is asked and that gives us strength so it gives us strength to me it gives us strength to a lot of people uh, to know that and that has been one of the good thing good part of it and i'm sure during this crisis also my focus is mostly on the larger systemic rights beat the arogya setu app you know there was there was a direction that if you don't download the app you will be jailed you know that is an administrative direction and i don't know from where do they think that you can jail a person for not downloading an app we we criminalize this disease like no other country has we said anybody who is having a, this disease is a criminal patient has been effectively made into a criminal and once you do that the person starts thinking like a, you know he's trying to hide because he feels he has done something wrong once the entire society try makes him feel that he you know he has got the disease because he was he was you know not uh, serious enough he he it was his mistake because of uh, which he got the disease and the height of it was was when the delhi government asked the doctors who got this disease to give it in writing an explanation as to why they got the disease the doctors who were treating them got the disease and the doctors were asked to give explanation as to how and why did they get it and this is not just one government i'm saying it's across and because the feeling is that it is your you know you you did not take care of yourself and that is why you got the disease and because you did not take care and you got the disease now you are a threat to everybody around and then you are now a criminal because you are now trying to kill everybody across nobody would willingly nobody willingly would want to get the disease and nobody would want to willingly spread it also this is something and we honestly uh st- started this uh conversation in, in in the messaging in the beginning itself the messaging in the beginning itself has been like this that uh don't spread don't spread don't spread it is not that why you got a disease go get yourself treated get yourself well no when you get a disease what do you say there are two ways to look at it one is that maybe you can see it as from a leprosy kind of thing the other is you know make it go the chicken pox kind of thing the leprosy kind of thing is uh, is where you know you become an ostracized person uh, you are no more welcome in your village you are no more welcome in your family you are everybody tries to keep you away you know and then it's a, sort of something nobody would want to be in the situation is but a similar disease comes that is a chicken pox kind of a thing comes of course the uh, the examples are not uh, exact but i'm just trying to give an idea chicken pox comes you know that okay the person has a disease and he has a chance that he can spread to others who have not got the disease but then you try to keep him in a room you learn how to deal with him you have to give food how to make sure he is taken care of and then the <clears throat> i think there is some question to do it on hindi and as well as in english but <laughs> ओके okay, अभी पर बहुत ज्यादा मतलब पैंतालीस मिनट का ऑलरेडी हो चुका है लेक्चर अभी मैं हिंदी में बोलूंगा तो शायद उसका कितना फायदा होगा पता नहीं बट आई ट्राई टू फिनिश दिस लेक्चर इन इंग्लिश एंड मे बी वी कैन हैव अ हिंदी वन लेटर सम अदर टाइम ओके सो दिस इज दिस इज दिस आर द टू एस्पेक्ट ऑन विच वी कैन डू एंड देन मे बी वी नीड टू लुक एट इट फ्रॉम दोज टू वेज ऑल्सो दैट हाउ वी कैन मूव इट फ्रॉम एप्रसी काइंड ऑफ अ डिसीज टू अ chicken pox kind of a disease and i think this is uh sorry yeah so uh, i think this is this is key sorry for the disturbance so yeah <coughs> the app uh, especially also needs to be looked into like a lot of people and during this period if you see exactly like 370 or a caa even during this period the way the supreme court has uh, behaved when people went to multiple times people went to the supreme court for relief to the migrants and every single time supreme court said we are not going to interfere we are not going to do anything government is central government whatever the government is doing that is okay we are sat you know we are nobody to look into it. that complete washing of you know its hand responsibility not to even ask the question that whether are they doing enough not even that whatever the government said 
I, I am personally not even considering to go go to Supreme Court for relief on my personal matters. I, I don't have very little. I have very little hope from mm, uh, the Supreme Court on any of those matters because you feel that it's okay. It, it is better to believe, you know, have faith in the benevolence of a uh, few of the police personnel or some of the staff there rather than going to Supreme Court and get unwanted remarks uh, passed against you. So you don't. That that is that, that is what we are seeing. But thankfully, what we are uh, also seeing is that the civil society and the media uh, being quite quite uh, vigorous in its analysis. The civil society is coming out with thanks to the CA movement. It's it's you know saw some kind of a rejuvenation, and that society civil society is now coming up and is highly vocal in all its. Uh, concerns. Uh, even though nobody is listening, nobody is responding. That doesn't matter. Uh, but that it's important that those points are take uh, you know kept across. The media, a lot of the media, which was uh, you know felt that they would be uh, sort of questioned in certain ways, are now doing tremendous amount of work uh, every single day. And that is how we are getting all these pictures of migrants, of people, or let's say how the Karnataka government initially decided they will not let. Uh, migrants go back because the builders said they should, uh, you know, they should uh, continue there. Even my own place in Dadra Nagar Haveli, where I was collected earlier, I get so many messages and videos from there where workers are getting out of the factories and saying they just don't want any work. They want simply to go home and nothing else. And their paramilitary forces are being, uh, you know, put to ensure that they go back uh, to the work or they go back to their, they don't go back to their, their home. And None, no positive intervention, only single intervention, single point intervention has been to show an entire population that we will tell, we can, we have the powers and we'll show you how to make you all sit at home and not respond to anything. And this is something very dangerous for all of us. Uh, but also the positive side is we are all connected, better connected than we were earlier uh, because we had a movement, we had a nationwide movement and it becomes a platform, a tool through which we can interact and we also question uh, those who are in power. Uh, there, I did not go into a lot of COVID responses and my own, I, I, I write quite a lot on uh, uh, what should have been done or what the COVID response uh, should have been. Uh, I write quite, uh, uh, I've been writing from March uh, first week, or March third week onwards on what all should have been done. And a lot of things happened much later, uh, three weeks, four weeks uh, later than that. And that also shows the kind of decision-making capacity. Actually, today I'm quite upset uh, because of the morning, uh, the death that happened. Uh, it, it, it shouldn't be acceptable in a, uh, in a civilized society that people are made to travel uh, on the railway tracks and then they, are, they, they feel asleep and they feel tired and they, they fall asleep on the railway tracks. And in the morning, a good strain comes and, you know, uh, just moves them over. And I don't know. Uh, so I was uh, I was saying that I would at least, uh, you know, light a lamp today at 7 o'clock. I request all of you also who are in the panel. Uh, it's not for anything. Uh, it's just that uh, when we do something, a uh, simple gesture, uh, it, it, it connects, it remains in our uh, mind that how we treated our own citizens how we have treating our own citizens, you know, and we should not forget it. If, if, you know, something every year we should do it, just to remember ourselves that when a crisis came, when we were, uh, you know, in a difficult time, we simply threw a lot of them under the train or the bus or the river, whatever you can call it. We simply assume that those lives are expendable and we should remember it every year because powers would change. Today, this is this government Five years later, ten years later, some other government would come, you know, maybe favorable to a lot of people here. A lot of people, you know, you know, might be feeling the same kind of feelings they are feeling right now. But on the other side, things would change. But certain aspects of uh, civilized society, certain aspects of democracies that we are seeing right now, there is a need to remember all this. There is a need to, uh, you know, record all this so that we evolve at least. At least the next generation comes out as a better one. Uh, than uh, the way we are. So my request is also to all of you, uh, if possible, and I don't think it is going to be a big movement or anything, but even 10 people can uh, do it. At least individually, we'll, we'll feel connected to what, uh, uh, you know, what is happening around us. So that's it from uh, my side. If there are any questions, then uh, I can. 
uh, anonymous attendee. Which state do you belong to? Okay, I belong to Kerala. Yeah, how do you see the amendments in the labor laws in MP and uh, 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 UP? So, I can take the questions, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's fine if you can take up because I was about to read the questions, but if you, you yourself are able to... Yeah, read, I think I'll read and I'll, I'll right. read and... Uh, okay, so. That, how do you, how do you see yeah. these amendments in the labor laws in MP and UP? Uh, this was not even a time to consider about the lab, uh, you know, because repealing certain uh, laws and uh, just in the name of reforms. Uh, <laughs> the, and these things will backfire. Uh, I mean, I'm not very particularly concerned uh, because these are something they feel that it is going to rejuvenate the economy. It is going to make something. None of that is going to happen. Uh, the uh, the post -lock lockdown is not post covid covid is just if you look at the rates if you look at the spread it is coming and it will affect a lot of people during this period and such kind of repeal would only mean there would be much more uh, what do you call uh, unrest there would be much more unrest in the labor class in the migrant worker class and that would actually lead to negative uh, investments and negative business sentiment. Uh, it is not going to be, there was a reason all these laws came in because hundreds and 200 years, you know, years of uh, worker struggle, labor struggle is what led to a lot of these laws. Some of them, of course, had to be studied and re reformed or changed, but using this op as an opportunity to just finish everything, I don't think uh, it's, uh, it is in anybody's interest. I don't even think they have considered, they have thought through. It is just a knee jerk reaction. Uh, to uh, call that, okay, there are no labor laws, come here, uh, something we have to do, and we did something. Uh, you know, I give an example of most of these governments, what they do is like uh, the dogs running after car, you know. Uh, they suddenly take a decision, okay, I have to run after a black car. And they, they run, they bark, they reach till the car and, you know, the tires, and then they don't know what to do. They don't know why they ran after that car. They will look here and there and they just uh, come back. So, uh, most of the decisions are not thought through. Okay, what next? You have uh, demolished all the labor laws. Is there any? Is there any new law that you are planning to do? Is there a labor code that you are planning to do? Then you should have in included that labor code today, instead of uh, these knee-jerk reactions. Uh, explain youth are base of energetic power. Uh, yeah, of course. I think I have uh, uh, made this thing very clear. That thankful to the movement. I am again very proud of the Citizenship Government Act and the NRC and PR movement because it gave an entire generation uh, a realization as to what it means to be in a democracy, what it means to be a responsible and active citizen. In a, you know, There were people writing poems, there were people creating graffiti, there were people writing, you know, uh, the artistic part came out, the, uh, you know, the protest parts came out. So all those aspects of the movement, of a vibrant uh, uh, democracy that came out. Of course, there were uh, avoidable, some violence-related uh, incidents also, but most of it was actually triggered by the unwarranted uh, or unwanted uh, response, you know, the, uh, the, from the state. So, I'm, I'm much more hopeful. When I resigned, I was very disappointed. I was highly in despair. But now I'm much more hopeful about the future of the country because the youth have decided to take a step and ask question. And this was seen in, demo, in emergency period also. Uh, it was not the case that everybody was against the emergency, but the youth were the ones who came out and, uh, you know, fought this. And later what happened, a lot of people understood why they are fighting it for. And that is also a responsibility we need to continue with. We need to constantly uh, have this conversation. One of the key aspects is that conversation across the people have stopped. If there is a right wing and if there is a left wing, if somebody is, you will call them a bhakt or a sanghi, they will call you a secular or a liptard or a, I don't know, whatever, uh, kongi, whatever you call, you're called. And then you just don't talk to each other. Uh, you know, we are fellow citizens. We are citizens of the same country. Uh, the, we share a, a common future. If, if the country becomes good, we both share uh, uh, good in that. If the country is going to be bad, then we both share that bad. So we, we share a common future. That understanding or realization is not there. Instead, we feel that the fight you know, against each other is the fight. That is the fight. In fact, there are a lot of other people in the world who would want the country to fail. And those are not Indian citizens. We have political differences. We have ideological differences, which is fine. 
you know as long as you are not trying to kill us that is the only thing you don't hate people who are questioning the government it's a very simple thing you have always questioning this government came into power by questioning the previous government a new government would come into power by questioning this government it's as simple as that that is democracy about it is always about demanding better faster you know and more and constant endeavor to improve and how would we improve by questioning the authority you don't if you try to shut down and silence that then it is the collective thinking capacity the critical thinking capacity of the entire nation that is coming down i hope uh, we understand that uh, so i have a question in between uh, okay uh, is something that you know uh, do you also feel that you know the our people in country wide uh, or the kind of environment created for over the period of time that people are more superstitious blind by faith uh, where you you know fall upon the charismatic leaders whosoever it is and not exploring more on scientific temperament going for research i know bringing medicine research in in our li- everyday life and talk you know talking about that rather than falling on charismatic leadership somewhere superstition also comes into so how do you reflect to the youth who who you know who is in the midst of this crisis see uh i am you know i i have said this earlier also democracy is a very difficult project uh, why because it expects a lot from its citizens it expects citizens to understand issues as you said find your own answer explore you know ask those questions it it, it is difficult because it puts a lot of onus on every citizen every single person and that's how we say that you know people are the ultimate power in a democracy whereas an authoritarian structure is is much easier uh, because uh, it only asks one thing uh, from uh, for the poor people that is an un uh, this blind loyalty that you you trust you trust me i will take care of everything all that i am asking from you is that you trust me and you defend me if people are coming to, you know there are we are having all these enemies they are all trying to you know trying to somehow uh, keep us away from reaching our goal and I, trust me i am going to do only good and it it is very easy and it is very natural to us also because our families are also uh, like that in our family structures and society structures are also like that we don't encourage young people to ask questions in our family uh, we would rather tell them that just listen what i am saying and the society also it is more more or less like that so our political structure was highly in contradiction to our social or familial structure family structure so this is where i think uh, we need to be really really you know d- dictators you know democracies don't change into dictatorship not because a dictator comes it it becomes a dictatorship because the citizens stop asking questions and citizens become lazy they become lazy because i call you uh, anti national and you feel that why should i ask question okay this fellow is calling me if i keep quiet he will consider me as a fellow citizen if i ask a question he would call me anti national why should i take all those emotional uh, you know and it becomes it, it is highly Uh, toxic and then you would keep quiet and that 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 is how because it puts a lot of strain on all of us and whether we are ready to take it uh, you know uh, is is the key part so charismatic leaders especially in a country like india is no solution and it is only going to add more problems uh, more and more uh, issues because no a person who can't even understand your problems how can you expect him to solve it Uh, you ha- you understand your problems and you need an avenue to solve your issues and you don't need a person to come and solve it you want an opportunity so that you can solve your issues and that framework that structure has to be created and that structure can be created only in a decentralized democratic uh, function uh, it cannot be in a centralized authoritarian structure and uh, i think it is also had to do with we had a long period of democracy and then we felt the need for some strong leader to come and show us all what to do and then we are seeing that and probably we would realize that that is not the way to go forward for us hopefully we would realize that it's important to question it's important some you know the more egalitarian power structure comes in place i hope we will we will learn and we'll realize that some questions on tourism i think uh, sector specific questions i would not rather take uh, so i hope that is fine 
yeah that's a very valid comment is that the government lacks empathy in its uh, uh, decision making with very very true uh, means it's not just the hate it's not just the you know to a community to a minority it's not just that it, it's absolute lack of empathy that is because of that authoritarian structure because the government feels it knows what is best for all of us and so a minor sacrifice what you are seeing as lacking empathy from the government side is a certain sacrifice demanded from the population for a larger good of a better future okay why is it that migrants are suffering a little bit it is because we want if they are not allowed to go back to their home because we want our economy to restart if the economy does not restart how will tomorrow they get so all the decisions are being made for everybody in front of you know and not leaving to anybody or any one of them and that is what is reflecting in the lack of empathy that is very much a part of that kind of decision making where you are taking a decision for somebody else you would see it in your family also sometimes you punish your child more than what is required and you justify it yourself saying that it is for his own good it is for his own good i am punishing it and a third person would look at it and see how cruel that person is how can you do it like that and this this is innate in the in the government uh, that is there today uh, that that is why it becomes dangerous for uh, all of us because in even in its good intentions it would end up hurting the country much more than it, its own imagination with all the even i'm i'm ready to give all their decisions are of good intentions but all their good intentions are going to hurt anybody anything more than any bad person would have done for this country because that is because of that uh, thought process which things all kind of sacrifices okay so that the country becomes some imaginary uh, something uh, and all such leaders and all such things have we only learned from history that it has only brought the country years or decades decades back not forward pm cares i think uh, very academic kind of a question but uh, it uh, pm nr for pm cares there was no need to create a separate fund i don't i don't think whatever they could uh, you know whatever changes they wanted to do uh, they could have done with pm nr only not the existing relief fund if they feel that csr fund could not have come they could have just made that change in the policy it's nothing like you can create a separate fund it's, it's just like in kashmir saying that you wanted to have a women's reservation and that is why you removed 370 that's foolish if you have the power to remove the 370 itself then you also had the power to you know put the, the women's uh, reservation you could have just done the re women's reservation instead of doing uh, removing 370 so you are doing much larger thing saying that a smaller thing couldn't be done uh, so this i think uh, and that money is going to be i feel that money is going to be not used at all immediately it is going to be used after the post covid the government is very clear uh, i mean in my understanding is that if you get a job then the government cannot claim the credit like uh, 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 you know uh, i i despite whatever i will never give credit to congress government or you know personally now i realize but my grandfather was a you know daily wager my father was a clerk and uh, i am i became an ias and then i was an engineer and then i became an ias and then i left that ias and all this made possible how you know i cannot say that 70 years gave nothing because from a daily wages family to become an ias and even to having that confidence to i don't want the ias it is because what the country has given me what the nation has given me and the what the people who have ruled those period has uh, given but that you know i can never attribute it to a particular government that i will always feel it is my success it is my success i fought this and i earned this whereas giving a cylinder or a gas cylinder the government can always tell you might have lost a job but that is because of your failure you know but you got a cylinder that is because the government is taking care of you government is taking care of you so these individual dolls you know with the photograph and stuff has a much more impact on a poor person because the person feels so he dear he gave me that and whatever is his failure it's his own failure he does not get a job it's his failure we we are tend, tend to believe like that even even you will have member you know family youth in your family who is not having a job and you would ask him are no pri kyun nahi mil rahe tum tumhe kyun nahi nokri mil raha aur us he start feeling that he is responsible whereas there is no job in the country we never feel that government is responsible individual failures become individual responsibility and small small steps like this would become government's largest say 
So I have a feeling that whatever money collected is going to be given like this, not as a large uh, response, but as an individual uh, payment uh, or uh, you know something which which a family can connect so that it has actually came from PM Care Fund. You know, it it came with the PM Cares and Modi's photos and everything, and you know, so that that feel. Because generally, if everybody is good, they, you want you would want better uh, country. You would not be thankful, and that is one of the key aspect of this thing that we might end up killing a lot of dreams uh, because everybody starts feeling that we should be thankful to the government just for we are alive and after that we will be thankful just for getting food you know our our dreams of having a job of having a better life or having you know going ahead everything is gone we don't even have those dreams anymore we are just saying okay if we get food that is all that is required and we'll start giving credit to the government for it for killing our dreams bringing it to just food and then delivering this food will become the whole uh, part of it. And that is even more dangerous. I think uh, I, I, my time is over. Uh, there are many questions on Kashmir, uh, the missile low increased militarization, uh, descent more effective, arrogious. There are so many questions. Uh, Okay, I don't think I will be able to. Uh, there are so many questions. I'm sorry. I think I should have. I should have stopped my part of the conversation a little earlier and should have taken these questions. Uh, <clears throat> we can, you know, uh, take one, uh, okay. one or two questions. Like, uh, if I can, you know, try attempt uh, combining like one that how the Indian youth or India as a whole, you know, can come together to fight the COVID, but then fighting with COVID becomes a resistant with the state government, you know, and then you are branded A and B, C. So that is one. Second, that can, there is a strong sense of Islamophobia much more during COVID period, which should not have been there. Uh, do you think any kind of interventions, youth or civil society or any, you know, the, uh, through any other international agencies, you know, can think over it and then help in dealing COVID uh, crisis. Uh, see, the second question is: It was clear that the government, you know, we would want a villain, uh, and that is not just about this. For everything, uh, for a person who feels that I have not done anything wrong, then why did this happen to me? And you would want some re somebody. Uh, earlier, uh, you know, religion was there, and religion used to tell shaitan or some devil or some some uh, some person to whom you could project all those things which are ha you know happening bad in your thing, and you could show that is the uh, reason. Now, uh, a similar kind of uh, thing is being projected to human beings uh, to separate. You know, we can find different different groups, and then we'd say this these groups, these group, these groups are responsible and i i think uh, initially what was the government's failure uh, the that was actually that tablighi uh, jamaat uh, the conference which is happening i would consider it as as a, one of the key failures of the government from preventing a congregation to happen because it was unlike any other congregation it was happening from with members across the uh, multiple countries are coming in and once it was brought down i think the response also should have been that yes, it was a it was a mistake. There is absolutely no doubt. But the panicky reaction was also that to defend whatever has happened. That also I don't agree, because when the larger uh, thing was when a larger fight is happening, a uh, larger fight is with uh, with you know that uh, COVID thing is happening. A lot of us are bound to make mistakes. You know, uh, be it. Uh, in, initially, this, you know, we were even keeping disease numbers in, on religion wise. This many number of people are Muslims, this many number of people are Hindus. But after that, that is left. That period is, uh, that thing is over. And now uh, it is all those WhatsApp forwards have gone in and people want to pin somebody for the failures of the government. But I don't think that is going to stick, uh, to be very honest. Uh, I don't think that is going to stick because. Uh, the failures are too much uh, uh, to even even if even if it is you know uh, 
or anybody who's trying to do it, it is ultimately government's responsibility to take care of it. And if the government is not able to take care of it, then it becomes again government's failure. Only. So uh, the other part of it is uh, we also need to, how, how would I say so? Uh, this conversation also has to happen now uh, because there is also a danger that one kind of a hatred becoming replaced by another kind of hatred. We should ultimately understand at some point, we all have to come across and start this conversation together as a country uh, that where uh, certain things are wrong and where certain things, uh, uh, you know, we did or we said uh, were wrong. I don't uh, agree to the, uh, the uh, you know, interference from the uh, Arab countries or because these are going to backfire when external countries are trying to or their influencers are trying to tweet and trying to exert pressure in what is essentially our issue. It's our failure. It's I consider it my failure that I am not able to tackle this in, and that is why external uh, agencies are having to come. I am not saying it should, you know, people shouldn't try to get it done. I know why people are trying to do it, do it also because and they are unable to stop it. And the danger is very much, very much in front of the eyes. I have this conversation with a lot of youngsters and they are upset with me also saying that, uh, you know, why don't you uh, also raise this uh, to our outside agencies? I said, I can't do that. This is ultimately, I am fighting for my country and my country involves each one of you and me and we all have, to, but not, not the people who are trying to influence. So I, I, I would not like to do that. Uh, but they are saying uh, after they kill all of us, then you can, you know, claim about your country and genuine upset, genuine concern. Uh, their anger, their anger, their concerns are all genuine because to a large extent, uh, you know, we let this run. But I think overtly trying to do this uh, further, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm probably I'm not a right, uh, you know, I don't have the right answer for it. Uh, I'm concerned, uh, but I don't have the right answer for it. Whether we should be creating even more no, uh, noise on it to, so that it uh, remains in the public memory and it create, gets attention from across the world, or uh, we, should, we should at least start from you know, bridging uh, the, the gap. I don't know. Uh, uh, well, well, very quick, uh, very quick, you know, uh, just opinion of yours that you know how do we understand this arrest of muslim youth in the country which is you know uh, during the covid period when you have no legal quick legal measures in hand uh, how yeah. do people you know understand this unrest yeah uh, the movement i remember i'll go back to the uh, ca nrc uh, period what was revealing was that the kind of hatred towards the minority or the kind of feeling, uh, in, in not, it was not just hatred, there is a feeling of threat that the, uh, there is some Gajwe Hind which is trying to take over the entire country and uh, you know, trying to make it into an Islamic nation. And these are beliefs also held by a lot of people in uh, majority. And those insecurities, those threats, perceived threats, also reflects in the attitude towards the, the minority community. And this, a lot of people whom you otherwise would have known as just friendly uh, person, they started expressing this explicitly during that period. So if you would start saying against CA, immediately that question would come, yes, no, why not? India is for Hindus and you know, you have you have 33 countries in the world, you have 83 countries in the world. And just that otherization would immediately come. I was actually, at that point of time, uh, I, was, I was saying that it is good because at least now you know that these things are coming out. The people, the silent, uh, you know, discrimination or the silent hatred that was going on for a long period, at least is now out in the open. Once it is out in the open, it can be confronted. We, we might seem powerless for right now to confront it, but it is not the case it is going to be always. There are governments in power which are secular in nature and they need to seriously invest in the kind of education which at least makes it more inclusive and the culture and arts which makes it more inclusive so that this, this hate part is you know completely taken out uh, from uh, our lives. 
the second person that is one thing second part is the kind of biasness the administration always had the administration the police i went to many places and uh, it was quite shocking uh, to listen to uh, senior police officers or senior administrative officers passing remarks which are really prejudicial but as if it is a matter of fact and uh, that is also uh, quite pointing towards that despite all these years we were still not able to come out with or have this kind of an administrative structure or at least inculcate these values in our officers to see beyond that prejudices see see beyond those uh, you know preconceived notions these are coming from there they are also part of the same whatsapp group where you and i are so when they are saying that these are the people who are spreading the same messages goes to the police same message goes to the constable same message goes to the sp and they are seeing it and they are just reflecting they are not reflecting as an sp they are reflecting as a as a con as a normal individual as a hindu the identity of a hindu comes or a, or a worried citizen comes rather than as an sp of or as a police officer or as a ca or a constable and that uh, has tremendous impact uh, on it but uh, arrests are unacceptable no that that's what i'm saying i uh, but there are non bailable cases against me also no, they have not arrested so i i should be clear on that they have not arrested me but they have made cognizable non bailable uh, fir against me also in rajkot for criticizing the uh, prime minister but it is important to raise questions despite whatever the government is doing the arrest would happen i i am pretty sure no movement has been there which has not seen consequences uh people you know even ca and rc movement when we were doing it also i was clear after the movement there would be some retaliation the government which is so authoritarian would not let people just come out and raise voice as it is the point is to support each other we all should you know stand together at this point of time we should be clear that we are being targeted we should also be clear that uh, you know any sort of support and assistance required we will uh, we'll give it to each other i think that that's the only thing but this is a phase this is a phase and it's good that we were, before that came in we were at least connected it's good that the hatred which is subsurface which was simmering has come out and which is good that we are able to at least confront it so that we can at least move beyond otherwise this could have led to something else at uh, some point of time and one day we would have suddenly realized this much of hate was already there in the society so uh, i would like to see it in a positive way i know it's not uh, an answer much of an answer but uh, that's it from my side i think we have had a long session uh, there are so many questions uh, and very interesting questions also but i am unable to take all of them today yeah i think uh, uh, this session was really very interesting and you are right Uh, we have number of questions and that will be coming up uh, keeping you know the kind of issues you have been talking and discussing uh, if you can attempt one last question you know uh, uh, if you allow me as, as at, at your wisdom Actually, the thing is that these answers are not you know no, not uh, one, in the sense i come to these answers so it uh, i take a long time to answer the questions are normally short but no, my answers no, no. i am asking one uh, quick you know it's not what should be the strategic response of minorities against the hate you know which is going on you know there is there is no such uh, it, it would be even a police to respond you know say that as an answer okay this should be our uh, strategic response one thing is very clear to be silent is not an option okay uh, to raise voice and you know assuming that okay just let's let's keep quiet and whatever is happening let it happen so that you know it, it, that is not an option uh, even a, a small pain uh, you know uh, it's a defense mechanism uh, a small pain should be made to be so loud that people realize that there is a, there is hurt there is pain happening because that is the only way in which you know uh, raising voice to be ensuring that those voices are heard in the democracy that is the only way to counter at least at this point of time but it's a long term project and and there is a lot of uh, it's not for me to say a lot of introspection also has to be done whenever we are having a conversation when somebody is trying to make some comment on let's say a prophet or you know let's say something or religious comment 
uh, it's important that we don't respond in the similar uh, similar way because it, it only adds to what the design is. The design is very clear to continue this divide to further you know uh, further. So social media narratives are also highly polarizing uh, to a large extent. That also needs to be seen. I'm saying to I try to do it because people call what all kind of names, all sort of things to me. I try to be as polite as possible because ultimately, if not today, tomorrow we have to live together. And I hope, I honestly hope to see that uh, uh, period when you know we get over all this and we can we can actually live together as one uh, country and you know fellow citizens of this country. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Kannan, it was really uh, very informative and, and as usual, you have been best mind to talk on the issues of civil society and how do we handle uh, democratically on issues of you know, uh, rights and democracy. Uh, on behalf of Democracy Dialogue, uh, we thank you uh, for spending your precious time, in fact, more than the schedule we thought of. And we look forward that in future, if we have any other session, we'll have bilingual. So some of the, uh, you know, participants who wanted to be discussed really also, we can cater their needs. Uh, uh, I thank all the participants to be here, very active, very participant, and hope that the messages and solidarity goes together and we work at the grassroots. Thanks again, Mr. Kanan. Thank and you all. Thank you. We hope we're looking for you, you know, for your talk again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Have a Thank good day. Thank you very day. much.